the gaming industry, like any other industry on Earth, faces ever-changing and evolving problems. But what exactly are these problems and what are studios doing to combat the problem? It's fair to say that these companies are under pressure to perform, but without change, the problems are only going to persist, which will negatively affect gaming. Today, we are discussing the new solutions to common problems in the gaming industry. So don't go anywhere. First up, it's the lack of job stability and longevity. Like many modern industries, the gaming industry is known for its constantly shifting workforce and even ownership. Companies are regularly changing hands and for that reason, upper management isn't as stable as other more established industries. Gaming studios close and relocate seemingly every other week. Only a couple of years ago, Bohemia Interactive, Ultimatum Games and HQ Trivia all closed their doors. Global Game Jam and Geography CEO Kate Edwards claims that 24% of people in the industry reported that they've worked for three to five employers in the last five years. When you think about it, this is insane. Imagine in any other industry working for three companies in five years. Your loyalty would constantly be questioned and you would struggle to get hired further down the line. However, workers in the industry are known for their dedication and more than 60% of the people currently working in gaming see themselves staying in the same industry for life. Edwards went on to explain that most people in creative of industries feel this way. She also said that unionization could go some way to solving the problem of instability, as well as training for managers to help them understand the importance of mental health within the industry. And whilst gaming is known for its long hours, Edwards also suggested that management needs to come around to the idea that the work-life balance of their employees is important for the studio's success. Do you work in the gaming industry? Next, we're talking harassment. Stay tuned. Of course, this is not gaming specific, but harassment Harassment in the gaming industry is thought to be on the rise. In particular, Ubisoft has reportedly been a hotbed for harassing their workers, as well as other top studios. This was brought to the forefront a couple of years ago when the hashtag MeToo movement started to highlight not just workplace sexual harassment, but the issue of women not feeling safe in public places in general. The problem has and will continue to demand more transparency throughout the industry, but you would be remiss to think the problem will change overnight. In an industry dominated by men, it will first take a willingness to accept there is a widespread problem before reforms can take place. But what might these reforms consist of? Well, more women in leadership positions for a start. This will help to keep men, who will previously have only had to answer to other men, accountable. Encouraging workers to hold each other accountable could also be the answer, but it will take a lot of work to stamp this problem out. Microtransactions are up next. Stick around. If you never heard the term microtransaction, it basically means any purchase made in-game. A new skin for your character, for example. Of course, most people are aware that in-game purchases are a thing, but some people, younger gamers for example, are not. And there have been claims that these in-game purchases are not completely transparent. There have also been reports of people, usually children, making these purchases without actually realizing they're doing so, or without realizing they're spending real money. And there have even been cases of children running up hundreds of dollars worth of in-game purchases due to less than clear warnings when purchasing add-ons whilst playing. But thanks to public outcry, some companies are now starting to abandon the microtransaction practice. The only real solution to this is to force companies to send a verification or confirmation email to the phone which the card is linked to, which will generally be apparent. Have you heard of any horror stories such as this? Let us know below. Next up, it's the lack of diversity. Another problem not just exclusive to the gaming industry, it has been claimed that in the UK market, the vast majority of workers in the gaming industry are young white males. And whilst companies should always be encouraged to employ the best person for the job, questions might be asked as to why or how white males are seemingly always, quote, the best person for the job, unquote. Some people have suggested that this can negatively affect the mental health of a minority worker if they look around the office and see nobody else like them. And a recent survey suggested that only 22% of people in the global gaming workforce are women, while shockingly, only 2% are black. Latinos fared a little better, with around 7% but this is still a shockingly low number. There is no way that minority groups don't have the same ratio of people who are capable of working in the industry. It's just a simple law of averages. Kate Edwards, who we mentioned earlier, said, quote, We know that people who play games today are basically from every walk of life and every kind of demographic. A lot of people don't even realize that there are more 40-year-old women who play video games than teen males, unquote. She went on to say that companies in the industry need to have more minority representation 
conversation in their boardrooms, and it really just comes down to a matter of will. Whilst we agree that things need to change, we think it might be a bit more than a matter of will. Give us your thoughts below. Loot boxes are up next. Similar to microtransactions, loot boxes are digital rewards, but with a twist. They basically act like a lucky dip lottery ticket, meaning you could pay a high price and get something completely worthless in return. Of course, this is nothing short of gambling, which is a point that is being raised more and more. Should they be seen as gambling by governments around the world, then it is only a matter of time before they are banned outright, putting a stop to a pretty significant cash cow for gaming companies. Alarmingly, a lot of gamers are on board with the idea of loot boxes, which is fine as long as the gamer in question is old enough to understand what they're doing. But again, similar to microtransactions, it is often children who are purchasing these in-game loot boxes, and a lot of these kids are not aware of the concept of chance, which is basically what they're paying for. Whilst they probably won't disappear completely, it is thought loot boxes will be subject to pretty serious reforms in the not-so-distant future. What do you guys make of loot boxes? Let us know below. We're talking about public perception now. Stay tuned. Down the years, games have continually been blamed for mass shootings and public disorder, thanks to classics such as Grand Theft Auto. Edwards suggested that the gaming industry in general has failed, quote, to step up and do its job, which is basically to defend itself as a creative medium, unquote. She went on to say how in the next few years, quote, every single politician on earth will have grown up with video games, unquote, which suggests there could be a perception shift on the horizon. But in the here and now, this is still a problem. She claims the toughest obstacle is getting people to listen to a rational argument. And even as far back as 2011, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled there was no link between video games and their impact on children. So what is the solution? Well, Edwards went on to suggest that we need to embrace the fact we're not some small startup industry. We are a strong, powerful, cultural, and economic force, whilst also claiming that the industry as a whole should embrace the economic power of games. Of course, these days, video games are a serious money spinner and actually make more than movies. And Edwards said the industry needs to be proud of what they've done and that they are a real, strong, powerful, cultural, and economic force on this planet right now. What are your thoughts on video games on the whole? A bad influence or harmless fun? Let us know below. And finally, a word on coronavirus. Of course, most industries have been affected by COVID, and gaming is no different. Making games consists of a lot of teamwork, most of the time with team members in close proximity and with restrictions coming and going all the time, we really don't know when the next serious lockdown will be. Of course, the easiest solution is to have teams work remotely, but this is only going to diminish efficiency and drive up costs. But by now, in 2022, we have been living with COVID for more than two years, so businesses are starting to adapt and restructure how they do business. So hopefully the future is bright for the gaming industry. What has been the biggest impact of COVID for you guys? Let us know below. As always, thanks for stopping by today and remember to drop in next time for some more fun and games. Also, why not do us a solid and like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye, guys.